I spent quite a bit of time a couple of weeks ago uh, tired of looking at stale documentation in IT Glue for our uh, Ubiquity and UISP um, stuff. So I, uh, I, I figured out with the help of uh, a few other projects out there, like uh, this particular one on uh, the Ubiquity Community Wiki to how to reverse the Unify por uh, network portal to get all of the information out of it and document it. So I built this nice, fairly simple little workflow. First thing is, uh, is it's got a sub workflow for getting the wireless lane information. And then another one that's going to run through and get all the device information and it updates IT glue. Um, this one runs uh, every morning. Uh, it runs through and pulls down all of the wireless LAN information, grabs it all, updates it to uh, IT glue. Um, and it looks kind of like this. So it's nice and easy. These will always constantly update as long as there's a pre shared key set in ubiquity too uh somehow they actually expose that via the api not super secure but i can document it that way um and if our engineers make any changes they don't have to you know oops i forgot to uh document it to it glue the workflow will pick it up and update it the next day um and then the second sub workflow runs through for both our Ubiquity controller and then our UISP slash UNMS controller and um, pulls everything out. Beauty is with the UNMS, it actually has an API, so I didn't have to think too hard about trying to figure out all the PowerShell for that. But um, with, with it, it runs through and it does the same thing for access points and switches and uh, does some real fun Jinja work to update that all. So you'll see, you know, access points are constantly, uh, consistently refreshed. And so our switches. Um, I even included this nice, fun little uh, chart here in the middle where it's actually pulling some of the information about, you know, what whether that uh, PoE on the port is active, if they've given it a custom name, um, if it's the fiber, so like this is our fiber uplink, uh, these are all inactive, what it's con connected to, so it drops it all onto the flexible asset, checks every morning for uh, for any, um, any of those updates. Um, the unfortunate thing and a couple of lessons I learned and maybe some things that you guys might wanna keep in touch keep track of if you're trying to document it and I'll happily share as much as I can of this workflow. Um, the 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 unify site API because it it it's it's really not like it's just reverse engineered. It's not supported by Ubiquity. Meaning if they make a major breaking change when they do a big feature update, some of this could just stop working. Um, the other one is it's also going to depend on where your controller is hosted. Ours is hosted on an Azure server, and we've got some weird firewall rules in place with it that made it hard for me to do it all via HTTP calls. So I actually had to run it locally on that particular server that's in Azure using PowerShell, and then it kicks it back. Um, fun stuff like that. So th those were some of the other little, little pitfalls, but it, it's really kind of nice. I was able to get all this information consistently refreshed into here. And, you know, if our techs don't have, our frontline techs don't have access to uh, our Unify site, if they get a phone call from one of our clients and they're saying, hey, I'm in uh, the conference room and I can't get on the Wi-Fi, well, they can maybe talk them through which switch they need to unplug to try to power cycle the POE on the, the puck. Uh, 